welcome back to another episode of ASEAN News, and here are some of the latest news for you. Timor-Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry, IMF, and the World Bank talks about Timor-Leste's business activities. Timor-Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the IMF representative, as well as the World Bank representative, met to discuss the business environment and the regulations that hinders business activities in Timor-Leste so far. Deputy President for Promotion and Cooperation, CCITL, Erguilino Fernandez Alves said, International Monetary Fund and the World Bank will establish cooperation with Chamber of Commerce of Industry, Timor-Leste, to contribute in economic diversification of the country. The purpose of the meeting between the CCITL, the World Bank and the IMF is to listen to the idea from the private sectors about the business environment in Timor-Leste, the state budget and the regulation that hinders business activity in Timor-Leste and to understand the exact economic procedures are and what has been the continuous baffling the private sector and hand-in-hand -hand identifies it. At the same time, explore possibility of cooperation in the future in which the World Bank and the CCITL can carry out to create the best environment for the private sector and Timor-Leste's business. The prospect of contributing to economic diversification, as we know, it will not take too long for our oil and gas budget will decline and we can also ease the dependence on the petroleum fund. Meanwhile, Pablo Lopez Murphy, the IMF representative, said the meeting focuses on the main prospects which is the Timorese economy is currently facing. The purpose of this meeting uh, was to discuss with the Chamber of Commerce you know, what was their perspective on the main challenges that the Timor-Leste economy faces going forward. So we had an interesting exchange of views about what are the main, the main economic challenges. Uh, we think that uh, an important priority uh, for Timor-Leste is to try to find ways to foster private sector development and the diversification of the economy. And I think that the Chamber of Commerce is, is pursuing those efforts, so we were glad to hear from them uh, and, you know, exchanging views about what's the best way in which this could happen and what are the, some of the challenges that, you know, uh, could, you know, block private sector development. Previously, the delegations from International Financial Corporation, IMF, and the World Bank also had a meeting with the head of Timor-Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry and discussed about the investment in the productive sector. After being elected on February 18, 2023, the head of Timor-Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry and his team have been meeting with international agencies' representatives and delegations, diplomats, as well as the national authorities. Government needs to improve Timor-Leste's human resources and economic policy before joining the ASEAN. In 2022, Timor-Leste's accession into the ASEAN as the 11th member with an observer status being accepted and declared by the actual ASEAN's member states through the 40th and 41st high-level conferences in the Cambodia. Meanwhile, a Timorese economic observer urged government to improve all sectors in Timor-Leste similar to neighboring countries before Timor-Leste can be adhered to ASEAN. There are two aspects of human resources development that we can link together, apart from improving the diplomat officials. Nevertheless, those relevant areas in all ministerial levels should at least have the idea about the international languages are English and Malay, or else. This is one thing that we still lack of. In terms of economic policy, there are a handful of things that we need to adjust in order to prepare and improve the internal capacity for us to compete with other nations when we have become the ASEAN member. The ASEAN's organization was established on August 8, 1967 in Bangkok, Thailand, by five nations which was Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore and Thailand. The actual member states of the ASEAN are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. 69 Rohingya lands in Indonesia's Aceh by boat. The United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, said about carrying 69 Rohingya Muslims landed in Indonesia's Aceh province, the latest in a wave of arrivals of hundreds flee desperate conditions in Bangladeshi refugee camps. Hundreds of Rohingya Muslims have reached Aceh in the past few months, even as untold number have perished at sea from disease, hunger and fatigue. 
The UNHCR had said that 2022 may have been one of the deadliest years at sea in almost a decade for Rohingya, a persecuted religious and ethnic minority group in Myanmar. For years, many Rohingya have attempted in rickety wooden boats to reach neighboring states such as Thailand and Bangladesh and to Muslim majority Malaysia and Indonesia, especially between November and April when the seas are calm. Nearly one million of them currently live in crowded conditions in Bangladesh, including many of the hundreds of thousands who fled a deadly crackdown in 2017 by Myanmar's military, which denies committing crimes against humanity. Malaysian Prime Minister vows to ease peace talks in southern Thailand. Prime Minister of Malaysia Anwar Ibrahim pledged to do whatever is required to facilitate a peaceful solution to a long-term simmering insurgency in southern Thailand during an official visit to Bangkok. Anwar stressed the insurgency as an internal issue for Thailand but said Malaysia will do whatever it can do to help find a peaceful solution to the conflict. Why is acknowledging that South Thailand is purely an internal issue within Thailand? But it's our duty as good neighbors and family to do whatever is required and necessary to facilitate the process. Thai Prime Minister Payu Chanwacha said cooperation will help address the problems in restive provinces, specifically greater economic development and improved connectivity between the two countries. Since 2013, Malaysia has helped facilitate peace talks between the separatist groups and Thai government, but the process has been disrupted. The latest round of talks resumed last year after two years' suspension due to the pandemic. More than 7,300 people have been killed since 2014 in fighting between Thai forces and shadowy groups seeking independence for the predominantly Muslim and ethnically Malay provinces of Naratiwat, Yala, Patani and parts of Songkhla, which border Malaysia. Hunsen orders closure of independent local news outlets. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen ordered the shutdown of one of the last independent local news organizations in the country, saying it had attacked him and his son and hurt the country. The Prime Minister said in a statement posted on his official Facebook page, the Voice of Democracy will no longer have a license to publish or broadcast from 10 a.m. local time. He ordered Phnom Penh police to keep order but not seize property. He said foreign donors to VOD should take back their money and its staff should find new jobs. VOD published a story of Cambodia's earthquake aid to Turkey. The story quoted government spokesperson Pai Sipan saying the Prime Minister's son and presumed successor Hun Manet had signed the aid agreement. Hun Manet is the Joint Chief of Staff and Deputy Commander for the country's armed forces and signing such an agreement appeared to have overstepped the bounds of his position. Human rights activist Phil Robertson said it was just a matter of time before VOD was shut down where he deemed this is a clean sweep on independent critics to pave way for Hun Manet to take lead of the government in the future. The Philippines and United States annual joint exercises continued amid regional tensions. Manila's army chief said the Philippines and the United States will carry out their biggest joint military drills this year against a backdrop of growing tensions with China in the South China Sea. The exercises underscore improved ties with the United States under President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and come as the Philippines condemns China's aggressive actions in the disputed waterways, including its use of a military-grade laser against one of Manila's vessels earlier this month. Army Chief Romeo Broner told reporters the annual Balikatan exercises will be conducted in the second quarter and involve more than the previous year's 8,900 troops. In 2015, more than 11,000 troops from both countries participated in the joint military exercises. Japan to increase express delivery fees amid rising inflation. Japan's two major express delivery companies have recently announced an increase in express delivery fees due to rising inflation. It will be the first time the two companies to raise prices in five and a half years with the development of e-commerce. The number of express deliveries in Japan has increased to nearly 5 billion a year. 
Yamato and Sagawa Express, the two major express delivery companies, have successfully announced that they will increase their prices starting from April both by about 10%. One of the main reasons for the price increase is that the high fuel price has greatly reduced the real profits of delivery companies. In addition to higher fuel prices, delivery companies hope to use some of the revenue raised to improve the treatment of truck drivers, which will ease its ongoing driver shortage. The country will strengthen restrictions on overtime hours for truck drivers from April 2024, stipulating that the total overtime hours for a year cannot exceed 960 hours. At the same time, the Japanese express delivery industry is also developing robots to alleviate the shortage of manpower. China will actively consider resuming visa facilitation for South Korean nationals. Chinese Foreign Minister spokesperson Mao Ning told a regular briefing that China will actively consider resuming the facilitation of visas for South Korean nationals. Seoul officials have said that South Korean plans to resume issuing short-term visas for travelers from China last week after China improved its COVID-19 situation. Mao said the lifting of visas restriction was a step in the right direction. South Koreans suspended issuing short-term visas to Chinese visitors last month after China abruptly ended its COVID-19 policy, leading to a wave of infections. Beijing retaliated by holding short-term visas for South Korean travelers. Rebels in Indonesia's Papua release images of New Zealand pilot. Separatists in Indonesia's restive Papua region released images and footage that they say show a New Zealand pilot taken hostage in good health, but pledged he will not be freed until authorities acknowledged the independence of the area. Philip Mertens, who flew a plane operated by the airline Suzy Air, was abducted by fighters from the West Papua National Liberation Army after landing in the remote region of Nduga. Reuters could not independently verify the authenticity of the images, but a friend of Mertens, who declined to be named because of the sensitivity of the issue, confirmed it was the pilot. Indonesia's Chief Security Minister Mahfoud MD vowed in a video to ensure Martin's release, while a spokesperson for New Zealand's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade said they were aware of the photographs and videos circulating, but declined to comment further. Thank you everyone, enjoy your week days ahead, stay safe, stay healthy, we will see you soon.